players you like, which players you don't like, and who you want to roll out with on your fantasy football squad for the upcoming season. I have just completed my very first mock draft for the upcoming season today, and I'm going to share the results of this draft with you, uh, letting you know my personal thoughts and insights, how I did on this draft, as well as how ESPN Fantasy thinks I did on this draft. So, just for some general information, this was a 10-team full PPR mock draft, and I was selecting from the first position, so I had the number one overall pick in the draft. And with this pick, I decided to select wide receiver off of the Dallas Cowboys, CD Lamb. And uh, yeah, I did this because CD Lamb just came off an exceptional fantasy performance uh, in terms of his year long output. He finished as the number one overall wide receiver last year with a phenomenal stretch in the last 10 or so weeks. Um, and, you know, all the very enticing and metrics you want to look for in a wide receiver's production, they were all peaking for him last year with yards per route run and target share. And just overall, when you take a look at the Cowboys offense, they haven't done very much to change it at all. In fact, the only thing that's really changed in a major way is the loss of Tony Pollard and the addition of Ezekiel Elliott. So... You know, they're regressing going forward. Who knows? I don't really understand what Jerry Jones means when he says we're going all in, but I think that with Dak and CD and mostly the same offense, him repeating the wide receiver crown is highly likely. Now, CD Lamb is an ADP consensus number two overall, uh, only falling behind Christian McCaffrey, and I did have the option to take McCaffrey with the number one overall pick, but I didn't. And that is just because of the historical trends regarding why running backs finishing number one overall. Uh, at least in my years playing fantasy football, I have never seen a top finishing back go back to back. Uh, it just has not happened. The closest thing I have witnessed uh, regarding that is Austin Eckler. He finished at the number two overall in one year, and then the very next year, he actually got the crown and finished number one overall. But when we're talking about backs that have already hit the number one overall, none of them have ever done it again in the following season. So, as great as Christian McCaffrey is, and the 49er offense is in the old system, uh, just, I'm just sticking to the trend and betting against it happening. So... With that, we move into my second round pick. Uh, this was like pick number 40 overall, because as you know, if you're picking number one in a string snake draft, everyone gets to make their selection, and then you go in the reverse order. So I did not get to pick for quite a while, but I do get back-to-back -back picks at this two to three bend. So with my second pick, I selected Derek Henry, running back of the Baltimore Ravens now, uh, and this was, you know, I usually go running back in the first round, but with CeeDee Lamb doing so well last year, and just the other two options being Brees Hall or Christian McCaffrey, I went with CD and I did feel pretty strongly that I was going to take a running back at the two, so looking at who was available, I liked Derrick Henry. Henry is entering an offense that likes to run the ball a decent amount, not like too much, but uh, you know, you've got Lamar Jackson in that backfield, and you add the biggest bruising back in the league, uh, and one of the stats that I think stood out to me the most about the Baltimore Ravens was Gus Edwards, excuse me, Gus Edwards had the most touches of any running back within the five yard line and less. So, goal to go opportunities basically. Um, if you have a running back in the game and you're trying to just punch it in for a touchdown, the Ravens were doing that the most uh, with Gus Edwards. And obviously, Gus Edwards is no longer on the team. You upgrade with Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry is on the older side. He's not quite as dominant as he used to be, but I think that. Having a pretty established running quarterback and, you know, a, all that goal line opportunity is going to help Derrick Henry's value. And I think that he finishes with 10 to 15 touchdowns at least. So that's pretty solid. And, uh, yeah, I, I'm pretty all right with this pick. Then at the number 41 overall, I believe it was, uh, with my third round pick, I selected 
had the most runs of 40 yards and 20 yards when he was active and I think he finished pretty close to the top in the year overall and he, he wasn't even playing for that much of it and um, yeah with Raheem Moster, Raheem Moster was not expected to do all that well he finished the year with like 22 touchdowns I think with a healthy Devon HN he eats up a lot of those touchdowns so this is a high producing offense that really likes speed he got a very skilled talented young back who's a absolutely um, a killer when it turns to turning on the the Jets and um, yeah I feel like he has a lot of upside I am pretty high on Devon HN if he can stay healthy he is going to be a very nice piece so with that I have one wide receiver and my two main running backs so I had to wait had to wait 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 and then when my pick finally rolls around again in the fourth round, I believe this would be pick number 60. I selected wide receiver off the San Francisco 49ers, Brandon Ayuk. Uh, Brandon Ayuk, you know, breakout year for him last year. Two years ago, we had a lot of people with high expectations for him, and he was kind of just in the doghouse, uh, dog pound wasn't being utilized, was kind of being punished for random things here and there. It felt like he had a lot of potential and he just was not getting his shot on the offense. And then you take a look at last year, he definitely did surpass Debo on the depth chart as a receiver. You know, Debo plays that wide back role where he is sometimes lining up as a receiver, sometimes as a running back. He's still like one of the best dual threats in a very talented guy, uh, lots of yards after the catch, but Brandon Ayuk from a wide receiver standing, uh, fantasy standpoint was the more effective and productive wide receiver, so of those two, I, I saw the guy that I liked and I decided to pick him up just compared to the surrounding talent. I do think that he has good wide receiver over one talent. The only thing that I am not so certain about is the offseason rumors. You know, Brandon Ayuk all throughout the offseason has been very vocally non-committal to the 49ers, you could say. He um, has been talking about wanting to play for other teams, giving the 49ers a list of other teams that he would play for. Um, saying like, oh yeah, I could, I could see myself in a commander's jersey or a Steelers jersey and things like that. I'll play for a team that ends in the letter S. A whole bunch of shenanigans, basically. And while the 49ers have not really done anything about this, uh, they have not engaged in any trade talks. As of today, Brandon Ayuk formally requested a trade from the 49ers. Now, I don't know what that is going to do to him. I think the team's the most common commonly linked with wanting Brandon Ayuk have been the Pittsburgh Steelers, the Washington Commanders, and the New England Patriots. So, if it is the Patriots or the Commanders, well, honestly, if it's the Patriots, he is the clear number one overall wide receiver. He enters that system as the top dog for sure. Drake May's number one option, and it's just up to Drake May how good he is at getting Brandon Ayuk the ball with the Commanders. I think that he has a better receiver than Terry McLaurin. Terry McLaurin is a very underrated wide receiver. I think last year Brandon Ayuk was the better receiver. And considering that neither guy has a real connection with um, Jaden Daniels yet, they would be starting at the same floor and building up. Brandon Ayuk is a little bit younger. Uh, but either way, it's a good situation for him. Jaden McDaniels, extremely, not McDaniels, Jaden Daniels, extremely quarterback, extremely talented quarterback, and uh, he, I, I feel like, could sustain two very high-producing wide receivers. It's just hard to say if he would immediately rule out Terry McLaurin or if Terry McLaurin would still maintain number one status on that team with Brandon Ayuk. Um, kind of falling to that second option. And then finally you got the Steelers where I think that Brandon Ayuk 
clears George Pickens easily. Uh, George Pickens, while he is somewhat talented, I don't think that he's any match for Brandon Ayuk. Uh, the only issue would be you either have Justin Fields throwing to him or you've got Russell Wilson for the beginning of the year. It definitely looks like Russell Wilson. And while, yes, Wilson has supported some very nice fantasy producing wide receivers in the past, if you think back to the last two years, uh, I think like last year, Cortland Sutton was pretty solid. Two years ago, everyone was a bust. Jerry Judy never really panned out. Uh, the Denver offense was just much more abysmal than anyone was expecting, so I don't know what Russ has to offer at this point. I don't know how good Brandon Ayuk would be on a team led by Russell Wilson. So honestly, from a fantasy perspective, I hope that the 49ers just decline all calls. They work out some contract and he stays because that is the best situation for him, uh, catching passes from Brock Purdy. Anywho, after that, I had my fifth round pick. So this is at the 41 overall. And this was my first real reach. Uh, I think that I overdrafted slightly. But with my fifth round pick, I selected Anthony Richardson, quarterback of the Indianapolis Colts. And this is because, you know, I, I, I really liked what I saw from him in those first couple games last year. I think he played like three games before injury. And he was a sh really um, impressive in both the passing game and the running game. He wasn't throwing for a ton of touchdowns, but he was running them in. I think he had multiple games with double uh, run running scores. And so having a dual threat quarterback in fantasy football does usually pay off uh, with guys like Jalen Hurts or Kyler Murray or Lamar Jackson. These guys who can get you yards on the ground and to the air. Someone that will run it in. Oh, Josh Allen, of course. Yeah, so I think that in the fifth round, this isn't too bad of an asking price. A uh, fifth round quarterback pick is fine. And uh, Anthony Richardson is a guy who is on a Colts offense that just improved a little bit. You know, they had Josh Downs have a decent year last year. You had Michael Pittman Jr. have pretty solid wide receiver one type year and then you just added Adonai Mitchell so that talent group gets better and then you also have Jonathan Taylor who when he's on the field and healthy can be a pretty good back so the Colts offense once Anthony Richardson is healthy and available it could be very adequate and so I like the upside give me yeah, Anthony Richardson in the fifth. Uh, maybe, maybe a little bit of a reach, but I am fine with it. I do like him more than some of the other options available at that pick. Then at number six in the sixth round, I have probably my worst pick in this draft. It was running back off the Chicago Bears, DeAndre Swift. Now, uh, yeah, just looking back at all. What is it, 15 selections? 16, of all 16 rounds, this is the one that I probably feel the worst about. Um, the draft that I was in only had a 30 second timer, and I think the person I was looking at for round six had just gotten taken off the board. And when I was looking at the remaining talent, it was a doozy. Um, and so I did not know what and just panic grab DeAndre Swift at the last moment. Um, and yeah, there's not really any rhyme or reason behind this pick. Yes, he will likely be the number one back in that Chicago backfield. Uh, the whole Chicago offense has been rewritten. You've got Caleb Williams throwing the ball. You've got uh, now Keenan Allen and Roma Duns catching passes uh, on top of DJ Moore, who already was there. And so, yes, Chicago could have put up more points, and this offense could be more high-powered. But there's just a lot of moving pieces, and DeAndre Swift isn't someone that's, like, that mind-blowing. I don't think that he ever really impressed as much as he was meant to in Detroit. And then last year with the Eagles, he did have uh, a couple games. 
sense where he went off, but it was a very small sample size of him really being as good as everyone thought he would be. And then with Chicago, there's still like question marks about their offensive line, I feel like. So DeAndre Swift is not a pick that I love. If I could go back and undo it, I probably would. Um, maybe. I, I mean, compared to whoever is behind him in this backfield committee. Um, trying to remember his name. I think he has like a uh, I'm remembering like really old names like Khalil Herbert and uh, yeah, it's it's escaping me. Whoever was at the top of the depth chart for the Bears last year, I'm sure that they're still like two leagues below DeAndre Swift, but it's the Bears. It's too early to be betting on them, I feel like, and I, yeah, I'm not a huge fan. Anywho, after that, we move into round seven. This is where I opted to take my tight end. So I selected George Kittle of the San Francisco 49ers. Uh, and I think that Kittle in round seven is pretty good, considering that, like, Sam Laporte has top three round ADP. And then you've got, like, uh, what? I think Travis Kelsey comes off a decent amount ahead of him. Mark Andrews might have been off the board, but George Kittle is definitely, like, top four tight end, both in the league, in fantasy, by all means, top four. And I think to get him in the seventh round is not that bad. Especially if Ayuk does end up moving off of the 49ers, then you have Debo, and you've got Kittle as probably that number two option before Ricky Pearsall. So, yeah, I'm happy with this. Then we move into round number eight. And with my eighth round pick, I selected wide receiver of the Carolina Panthers, Deontay Johnson. This was a pretty good trade for the Panthers. You get a guy who, when he's healthy, is can really do anything on the football field. Uh, can line up almost anywhere. Uh, has great success. He had some problem with drops earlier in his career, but then just saw a load of targets and a bunch of catches. And last year, had he remained healthy, he probably would have been a much more effective fantasy wide receiver. But he has had a lot of time to recover, and um, now he gets to be the number one wide receiver option for Bryce Young. Now, if Bryce Young can actually get him the ball, we'll see. We'll see. Um, that Carolina offense last year was not that good at all, but Adam Thielen did see quite a bit of success, at least in the first couple weeks. And then you had Deontay Johnson and Xavier Leggett and Jonathan Brooks. So the Panthers are making strides to try and make this offense nicer for Rice Young. I, I think that he had a pretty underwhelming freshman year uh, in the NFL. And so he has to be better. If he isn't better, I think, honestly, like they are going to look for a change. You do want to give him at least three years, but there's no way he can be worse than last year, right? Um, at least I hope. And so, yeah, um, don't know exactly how he is going to do. I think it's very Bryce Young dependent, but he has the talent, and I think he's the clear wide receiver one on that team. And then moving into round nine, I selected yet another wide receiver, and this is Marquise Brown of the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, and actually, I feel like this is a very solid pick. Just because Marquise Brown, he is like an underrated wide receiver. His connection with Kyler Murray on the Cardinals. There were times where he was putting up solid, solid wide receiver one numbers. And it was just about staying on the field. Uh, and then in this Chiefs offense, you think about what they have. They've got Travis Kelsey, they've got Rishi Rice. They just added uh, Xavier Worthy. But Rishi Rice, with all of his offseason antics and car stuff, uh, it's likely that he misses quite a few games. And then you've got Travis Kelsey, who will be the number one target. But after that, Marquise Brown is like one of the more talented wide receivers that. Um, Patrick Mahomes would have at his disposal in the last few years since Tyreek Hill. The wide receiver room of the Kansas City Chiefs has been ungodly, ungodly awful. And with Rishi Rice, like, being as good as he was last year, but then 
having all of these issues. I think that Marquise Brown, at least for the first half of this upcoming season, is going to be the wide receiver one, and he is, like, much more talented than some of the other guys, like, MTS that they were trying to run, or, uh, Kadarius Tony. yeah, so this is a clear upgrade for Patrick Mahomes, and I think that he will be getting a lot of targets, and Marquise Brown is quite fast as well, so he'll do, do just fine in this offense. I like this selection. And then, going into round 10, once again, a wide receiver from me. I selected in the 10th round, Lad McConkie, wide receiver of the Los Angeles Chargers. Uh, and I've heard a lot of really good things about Lad McConkie, his ability to line up in the slot. That paired with the fact that, without Keenan Allen, the Chargers do not have a good wide receiver. Um, Josh Palmer is probably the closest thing they have to one with, yeah, the only other option being, like, Quentin Johnson. And so, with these two guys, they're going to line up more on the outside. And that leaves the middle of the field all for Lad McConkie. And, uh, Keenan Allen was, like, out of one of his best fantasy years last year, catching passes from Justin Herbert and Lad McConkie straight out to Georgia. Talented dude. Obviously, is not going to be as productive as Keenan Allen right off the bat, but I do think that he could have a lot of target share, and he definitely has a lot of, like, field just to himself right now. So, if he steps up to the opportunity, there's a lot of of success uh, up for grabs for him, so uh, we'll see. I, I do think that of all the, like, rookie wide receivers, Lad McConkey has the highest ceiling, just because Malik Neighbors is catching passes on a New York Giants offense that, like, wide receivers have been going there to die recently. Look at Kenny Galladay, look at some of the other dudes that they've tried to employ recently, Darren Waller, and Darren Waller got divorced immediately, like, had one year on the Giants and then <laughs> retired. So, yeah, I don't know how successful Neighbors is going to be able to be. And then, outside of that, we've got Adonai Mitchell who's going to fall to wide receiver three on his team, most likely. Uh, Safer worthy, at least wide receiver three. And then, yeah, who else was off the board? Oh, Brian Thomas Jr. Brian Thomas Jr. off the Jaguars. He could definitely be like a second option, though. Oh, maybe even one. We would have to see, though. Um, but I do think Vlad McConkey has the most sure shot path to success, considering where he plays on the field and what the Chargers are missing. So, yeah. And then after that, in round 11, I selected a running back. This is Gus Edwards off of the Los Angeles Chargers as well. Uh, and this is another pick that I think is not bad for where I got him. Gus Edwards is rumored to be leading this backfield for the Chargers. I think they also picked up J.K. Dobbins. You've got both J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards coming over from Baltimore to this new Jim Harbaugh-led Charger team. And J.K. Dobbins in the last few years despite how much people have hyped him up, he has just gotten injury after injury. It's been really sad for him. Uh, really sad for anyone that has owned him in fantasy. Uh, just a brutal couple of years. And Gus Edwards, he ate up a lot of those touches last year, and I think even the year before. And now he's coming over to a system where, if you watched any Michigan football games while well, um, Jim Harbaugh was in charge this past year, you'll know that they basically won that championship off their running game, so they're going to be a very run-heavy offense. Yes, they do have Justin Herbert, and yeah, you're going to throw the ball as well, so I don't think it's going to be one-to-one -one ratio of how much they ran it in Michigan to how much they run it on the Chargers, but I think we'll see a definite uptick, and yeah, what was it? The Chargers were talking to Austin Eckler before Austin Eckler left, and they said that they wanted to use him as like a 300 touch guy. Um, 
and Austin Eckler was like, no, I'm not about that. So, Gus Edwards, the workload is there. If he can stay healthy, there's a lot um, for him to pick up. And in the 11th round, getting a... Yeah, he's not a fantasy RB1, but the RB1 on a team that is looking to run the ball a lot, I am fairly happy with that. Then, moving into round 12, we've got a backup quarterback pick. I selected Aaron Rodgers off the New York Jets, uh, and this is, you know, uh, heading into the last couple picks of the draft. I think I've rounded out my wide receiver room. I've rounded out more or less my running back room. I think the first two picks were strong. The, yeah, uh, the DeAndre Swift pick had me scratching my head and kind of lamenting my draft a little bit, but with Gus Edwards, I was able to make that up a little, and then, yeah, just in case, just in case Anthony Richardson is not pinning out or he gets another early injury, why not go and grab a guy that the last two times that he was on the field and played a full season, he was the MVP. So, get Aaron Rodgers on the New York Jets, we'll see if the second stint goes better. Obviously, last year, before I even got a pass off, it was done. Uh, but his recovery timeline was impeccable, and I haven't heard anything that promising from camp yet about Aaron Rodgers. I only know that he missed, I think, like, optional OTAs because he was going to Egypt. Like, he missed it for a vacation in Egypt that he planned way in advance. So, yeah, your typical Aaron Rodgers offseason cycle. But the upside is there, and I don't mind using a 12th round pick on Aaron Rodgers. Maybe it'll be amazing. We'll see. Then, moving into round 13, I have a running back pick. This is more so a handcuff than anyone that I would expect to be able to use. It is Marshawn Lloyd off of the Green Bay Packers. Uh, Marshawn Lloyd is a rookie running back. He would be on the depth chart behind Josh Jacobs, their new acquisition in the offseason. And yeah, I'm not expecting him to really compete for that many touches or take anything away from Josh Jacobs, but he is a young back, and he's definitely one of the best backs in this draft. Um, other than him, you really only had Trey Benson, and uh, there was one other, one other guy, I feel like I just saw it. Oh, Jonathan Brooks off the Panthers. So Jonathan Brooks is most likely to succeed just based on where he got drafted. The Panthers had no real running back game last year. Uh, and then, yeah, Trey Benson is in a harder to succeed position, though he is probably a better back than Marshawn Lloyd. And then you have Marshawn Lloyd, who was very effective in his last year at USC. And if he is given an opportunity, I think that he could be very good. Uh, Josh Jacobs is on the older side, and when you look at the rest of the Packers, they are a very young offense, so just given the fact that Lloyd is talented, I think the talent is there, and Jacobs did miss a few games last year. If Josh Jacobs were to miss any time, then Marshawn Lloyd, I think that his value would be pretty great. So, uh, yeah invested in him in the 13th round. Then moving into round 14, this is where I decided to beef up my tight end room. I was rolling out with George Kittle. I figured I'd add one more guy just to round it out. And uh, I was surprisingly able to get Dallas Goder um, off the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, Dallas Goder for the early part of last season. I think he was my tight end one. Um, I was starting him in a lot of games. I don't really remember who I ended the season with anymore, but outside of a few dud performances, he was fine. He was fine. You know, when you're playing in an offense with AJ, sorry, yeah, AJ Brown and Devontae Smith, and then now you have Saquon Barkley. There are a lot of people that can't catch the ball ahead of you, but Dallas Goder not bad for a backup tight end. I'll take him. I'd much rather have him as backup than the starter, um, like I did last year. And so him playing behind George Kittle, that's a pretty good room. Um, I'm happy with that. And then going into round 15, this is where I 
decided to pick up my defense. Uh, I'm not very high on defense. I honestly could have picked kicker here, and that would have been better, a smarter move. I just, it was my last two picks. There wasn't a lot of time. I wasn't thinking as much. Um, kind of, I had mentally checked out a little bit more after that round. My tight end pick, so the back-to-back -back just caught me off guard, and I opted for the defense, and so I picked up Kansas City defense, uh, which is all right, really. I don't care about defense in the draft. I'm much more of a week-to-week -week defensive streaming kind of guy. Um, early on in the first couple weeks, maybe some defense will start doing really well if you try and pick them up, but if not, I really just hunt matchups and plug-and-play my defense. So, uh, as for why I went with the Chiefs, they had a pretty solid defense last year. It was, I think, more the contributor of the Chiefs' success um, rather than their offense as it characteristically had been in the Patrick Mahomes era. And yeah, they did lose Legereus Snead to the Titans, but most of the other pieces were still there, so I don't think the falloff will be that bad. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I don't really care about that pick. And then finally, with my Round 16 pick, the last pick in the draft, I selected kicker of the Miami Dolphins, Jason Sanders. Um, and yeah, I, I needed a kicker to finish up my team. Once again, I probably should have taken it with the 15th round of pick. Um, but looking at the guys that were available, it was like Cairo Santos, um, Cameron Dickerson, whoever for that one guy is, I think, for the Chargers. And uh, Jason Sanders, I felt like, was on the most high-powered explosive offense with Miami, you know, last year scoring 70 points in one game and just being pretty offensively uh, outputting compared to the other teams in the league. Uh, they'll line up for a lot of extra points and then also need a field goal here and there, so... I like to bet on the offense when it comes to the kicker, and Miami, I don't think, has really gotten worse in any way, so, yeah, that is my selection. So, with that, we have my entire draft, my entire mock draft. Once again, I will go through it. So, first I had C.D. Lamb, then I had Derrick Henry, then I drafted Devon H.N. With the four, I got Brandon Ayuk, then Anthony Richardson. DeAndre Swift, George Kittle, Deontay Johnson, Marquise Brown, Lad McConkey. I'm counting incorrectly. Uh, Gus Edwards, Aaron Rodgers, Marshawn Lloyd, Dallas Goder, Chiefs defense, and uh, Jason Sanders. Now, this draft got me a whopping score of A is C from ESPN's Instant Draft Grader. Um, I guess they did not like my team all that much in the top strengths and weakness section for the positional breakdown. It said my strength was my tight end and my weakness was my kicker. Now, if that's really the case, if the kicker is the worst position on your fantasy team, is that really that bad? I don't think so. Um, anyway, taking a look at the other 10 teams, um, seems like ESPN Fantasy does great kind of harshly. It gave out 7 C's, it gave out 1 B, and it gave out 2 A's. So rather than wasting your time with all these mid teams, I'm just going to give you an overview of the two teams with an A grade and let you decide if they're really deserving of an A or not. So, for the first team with an A, this is called Joe's Scary Team. We had, at the quarterback position, Jalen Hurts. At the running back, Christian McCaffrey. Uh, at running back to Samir White. Then, for the wide receivers, you've got Michael Pittman Jr. and Marvin Harrison Jr. At the tight end, we've got Kyle Pitts, Flex, Metcalf, uh, Saints defense, kicker Brandon Aubrey, and then on the bench you have Austin, Amari Cooper, Christian Kirk, Cortland Sutton, Mike Williams, Jacoby Myers, Antonio Gibson, and I don't even know who this is, Jay Wright. Oh, Jalen Wright, rookie running back to the Miami Dolphins. That's right. Uh, and I have to say, this does not move me. I do not understand why this got a A. 
as with Jalen Hurts, he has a dual threat quarterback. He has the tush push benefit. So I want to say Jalen Hurts, Christian McCaffrey, very good picks. Then Pigman is pretty solid. He did have a pretty solid year. I do think that with Anthony Richardson, maybe his value goes up a little bit. Uh, Marvin Harrison Jr., the most talented wide, rookie wide receiver. Um, probably the one to have the most success. I, I forgot about him when I was talking about Ladd McConkey and all those other guys, just because like Marvin Harrison Jr. is like that. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind that he'll do well. It's just how well. Um, and I like DK Metcalf. I think DK Metcalf at the flex is pretty good. And I like Amari Cooper, but Christian Kirk, Cortland Sutton, Mike Williams, Jacoby Myers, they're all okay. These are all okay wide receiver guys. Christian Kirk will be boom bust. I don't think Cortland Sutton is going to do all that well. Mike Williams, yes, he is the wide receiver too on this theme, but I think that there's a reason why the ADP is so drastically different between Garrett Wilson and Mike Williams. Jacoby Myers catching passes from in O'Connell. I am not moved if Gardner, when Gardner Minshew wins out that quarterback room, yeah, maybe that'll be more enticing, but really this running back room is what I think is not that good. Christian McCaffrey is obviously a great running back, but then Samir White on the Raiders offense, which I don't think is going to score a lot of points. Samir White has put on a lot of weight, and he looks pretty beefy, but the Raiders have reported that they're looking to add one more guy to their backfield, whether that be Kareem Hunt or Leonard Fournette or just another free agent out there. So I don't think that his role is going to be as big as people are expecting. And then your backup options are Gibson and Wright. I don't think that is that impressive. Yeah, and then with Kyle Pitts. Kyle Pitts has just been a disappointment year after year. Uh, obviously no more Arthur Smith running the offensive show in Atlanta. Maybe that spells some success, but I would not take that risk. So... ESPN thinks that Joe's team is scary. Give him an A. I would not. Uh, I'm not super high on his team. The other team that they give an A, on the other hand, Eric's excellent team. Let's take a look at his starting lineup. We've got quarterback Joe Burrow, running back Kyron Williams, running back Josh Jacobs, uh, wide receiver one, Devontae, sorry, no, Amon Ra St. Brown, wide receiver two, Devontae Smith, tight end Sam Laporta, flex wide receiver Calvin Ridley, Ravens defense Jake Elliott for your kicker, then in the wide receiver bench you have George Pickens, Terry McLaurin, Roma Duns, I think this is Jim Jameson Williams, yes it is, and then Brian Thomas Jr., Lions defense, and Kirk Cousins as your quarterback uh, of the bench. I guess ESPN Fantasy does not give us a single shit about running backs because what is up with this? You have Kyron Williams and you have Josh Jacobs and yeah, those are two pretty good starting running backs. You don't have another running back on your roster though. Uh, Kirk and Joe Burrow I think is a solid duo. And then Amon Ra, Devontae Smith. Devontae Smith at your two is like, it's okay. He is a little bit hit or miss. I don't love him at his price, but for the rest of your wide receivers to be Calvin Ridley, Terry McLaurin, George Pickens, Roma Dunsey, Brian Thomas Jr., yeah, uh, a wide receiver room is pretty nice. I will give him that for sure. Tight end of Sam Laporta. Yeah, Sam Laporta also just a little high in the pricing. I don't think he's worth where he's being drafted, but the talent is definitely there. Um, and yeah, no backup tight end, no, I don't know, uh, maybe, maybe I'm just a hater, maybe I'm being salty, but I really don't think that these teams are built that well. Um, I'm honestly just curious to see what the other teams look like at this point, because maybe there is like a phenomenal team that got absolutely snubbed by the auto creator. That one's not too bad. That is... No way. Oh, wow. Yeah, this is... This is a surprisingly adequate team for it to get as bad of a grade that it did. Okay, this 
this is for context, one of the teams that got a C from ESPN. Quarterback Kyler Murray, running back Isaiah Pacheco, running back Joe Mixon, uh, wide receiver one, Jamar Chase, wide receiver two, Cooper Cup, tight end Dalton Kincaid, flex running back James Cook, Chargers defense Justin Tucker uh, for your kicker. Then off the bench you have Tank Dell, uh, Javante Williams of the Broncos, Ezekiel Elliott, Keon Coleman, J.K. Dobbins, Curtis Samuel, and Demario Pop Douglas off the Patriots. Honestly, I like that team a lot more than I like the two other teams. I think that it's more well-rounded. You have some guys that I actually think are going to have a better year. James Cook at the flex is crazy. He is definitely RB2 worthy. Honestly, even RB1 worthy. Um, Joe Mixon before James Cook is kind of interesting, but nonetheless, you land a lot of very talented dudes on your team. Got that dual threat quarterback. Your wide receiver room is pretty good in your first three. Your first three running backs are also very solid. Plus, you do have Javante Williams, who might be in a committee, but I think that he has the best chance of emerging out of that committee. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how ESPN does their rankings or grittings, but I don't really agree with it. So, comment down below. Let me know who you think has the best team of the four that I read out to you, including my own. And yeah, I hope that you were able to get something out of this video. If you enjoy content like this, feel free to like, comment, or subscribe. I'll be putting out more videos as the weeks go on, uh, slowly ramping up in NFL content once again, so do not worry. And yeah, thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.